Hi. This is a remake of a presentation I did for the Society of Piping Engineers and Designers in Calgary, sometimes known as SPED. Uh, the presentation occurred in uh, March 27, 2013 in downtown Calgary. So I tailored my presentation to uh, piping designers and I wanted to explain how sometimes how the way the piping is rooted or done it affects a pump system or vice versa. I started by trying to show that sometimes there's some confusion about some standards and uh, for example a class of flange called ANSI 150 pound if you ask somebody what does that mean 150 pounds most a lot of people will say well it means it's rated for 150 psi. Well fortunately not that's not quite the case it probably was the case once upon a time, but uh, no longer is. This classification system is now more a geometric classification than relating to the actual PSI or pressure that the flange can withstand. So it's related to the bold circle, thickness of the flange, etc. So to find out the actual um, the actual rating of this flange, you need to go to the to the code, the ASME code B31.3, and you'll see tables in there that will tell you. Well, for this class flange, this material and this temperature, temperature is a key here, this flange will withstand so much pressure. So a 150 pound flange typically will be quite good for 300 PSI and above. But you need to check uh, for the material and the temperature. Another interesting uh, fact that uh, I researched a little bit is where does this thing of term of pipe schedule come from? So we all know there's different thicknesses of pipe and they're called schedules. You have schedule 40, 60, 80. Well, it turns out back in the day, they started, schedule just means a list, right? So they started with a very small list of pipes and pipe sizes and thicknesses. And they had, you know, large, extra large uh, standard. And they quickly had to expand that and they started giving numbers such as 5, 10, 20, 40, etc. And that's all it is. It's just that they needed some sort of a system to classify uh, pipe sizes and wall thicknesses. And that's where it comes from. So what is the perfect piping system? Yeah, it's a bit like asking what is the most beautiful painting or what is the best written song ever? It's not a question you can answer in, in absolute terms, but if you had a choice to how to run the pipe in the best way possible, how would it be? Well, one way is to avoid having these ups and downs uh, these isolated high points where air can get trapped. Some people call it avoiding pockets, but I prefer to think of it more as isolated high points because that's where the air is going to get trapped. So the problem here is the air will be, will be trapped there and you'll have trouble starting up your system. You may not get rid of the air, you may have to put vents in. If you put vents in, you have to get, make sure you maintain these vents, etc. It's a bit of a pain. So if you can avoid these right off the bat, much better. Uh, sometimes it's just not possible to avoid, so you have, you have no choice, but uh, and you may consider putting vents. But if you know about this and you take care, it's then you will, you will reduce the chance of this happening if it's, if it's possible. The characteristic of a siphon is that you can empty a tank by first going up and then coming back down, as opposed to just putting a pipe or a tube at the bottom of the tank and just letting it drain out. That's easy enough, but a siphon can actually do it by first going up and then down. So how does it do that? Well, once the fluid is in the pipe and you have fluid everywhere, there's low pressure at the top and it's this low pressure that helps to suspend that part of the fluid that's there at the top of that short column. And then once it's over the hump, it just keeps going. So why is this uh, important? Well, a pump system that pumps up into a tank is like a siphon in reverse. I mean, we're pumping in versus it coming out, so the fluid actually doesn't really know if it's going forward or backward, so that if, uh, from a pressure point of view, it's going to see the same sorts of pressure. And when we're pumping upwards like that, at that high point, we will have low pressure. So one of the consequences is that if your pump shuts down, well, you have the siphon action will happen, and then of course you should have a check valve to prevent that so that 
you don't have a mess, you don't have the pump turning backwards, etc. Uh, a little later on, we'll have a video showing a pressure in a system, in a model system, and you can see, we'll be able to see exactly how much pressure we have at each point, starting from the pump discharge to the top with low pressure to the outlet. Here are a couple of issues related to piping and how you approach the tank and feed a tank. If you're not careful, you could cause a lot of air entrainment, and of course, if the pump sees air, more than a lot of air and fluid, it won't pump as well if there's air in, if it's just fluid. So be careful as you bring in your pipes. If you bring them in more or less willy-nilly, well, if, the, if there's a high rate of flow, they're going to disturb the surface and cause a lot of air to be entrained downward into the pump. So try to bring them in vertically, nice and smooth, under the fluid level, and as far away from the suction as possible as to not affect the streamlines going into the pump. The other issue that uh, confronts us sometimes is vortexing in the uh, pump uh, box. If the liquid is too low and the flow is at a certain rate, it could happen that we form a vortex and air again is entrained into the pump. So to avoid that, we have to have sufficient submergence of the suction to ensure that that vortex won't form. If the vortex does form you know, forever, for whatever reason, if we've increased the flow rate or whatever, there are remedial actions we can take. We can put baffles, either horizontal or vertical, to try and stop that vortex from forming. So next you're going to see a video that I made some time ago that shows exactly this vortex formation and how it can be started and stopped depending on uh, what actions you take. This experiment shows uh, the formation of vortexes in a suction tank. Um, if the uh, flow is uh, high enough and the depth of the suction tank uh, becomes low enough, a vortex will form and air will be entrained into the pump and um, this combination of air and fluid uh, won't pump uh, as well and, uh, and uh, the flow rate will drop so that uh, there will be a disturbance in the process. Uh, what you're seeing here now is the same pump system with a little centrifugal pump running in a recirculation mode. And uh, with this uh, discharge valve here on the uh, tank um, uh, side, on the upper tank uh, emptying side, I can vary the height of the uh, liquid in this upper reservoir. And the smaller I make this height with respect to the, uh, the connector, uh, which would be uh, similar to a, a suction pump connection, vortex will form. I don't know if you can see at this point right now, we're at a level where vortexes are just wanting to form. And if I increase the flow rate in such a way to make the level drop, you'll see that the vortex will get a vortex formation just about immediately, as you can hear from the noise. If I let get the level to increase again, I can get the vortex to disappear. The vortex is dependent on the submergence height between the uh, tank surface and the intake. One fix for uh, vortexes is to put in baffles in the suction tank. So this might this can act as a baffle. If I put this in the tank, I can make the vortex disappear here. So you can try combinations of vertical, horizontal baffles, and they will very often solve the uh, vortex problem if you cannot do anything else to change the problem. So here I've zoomed in a little bit so you can see a little bit better what's happening. As the level of the tank increases, the vortexes are more difficult to form. And as I let, let the level decrease, and I can see gradual formations of vortexes, eliminate this vortex here and there's a gradual formation the more the level comes down the more likely vortex will happen so here we have pretty well fully formed vortex at this level here
from the vortex. And if I raise the level, I'll eliminate the vortex. And there you have it. How to avoid vortex formation.